We've been busy mastering expert modes in the hopes of plundering all of the rare and powerful drops from the Tuma Amaskut. We struck gold on the last episode getting our second unique item, the Light Bearer Ring, arguably the most powerful ring in the game because of the potential it offers in various PVM scenarios by doubling our special attack regen. It is time to continue our race to adventure by further perfecting our expert runs. There is still so much room for improvement and higher levels to reach for better chances at the loot and eventually the prestigious cosmetic kits to add on to our new rewards. Our main strategy is to run experts at the base level currently, as that's where we are starting to get comfortable. The rate is around 1 in 22 for a personal drop at this level, if no deaths. So it's not too shabby. We're looking at a drop every 10 to 15 hours. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on more Rage 3 exploits and future item testing outside Rage 3 during our collection log progress soon. Oh shit! Yo, my purple! Oh shit! Oh shit! Uh, come on, baby! Put that bang! Put that bang! 40 experts for the second purple on the expert. Oh my days. Yo, what are you thinking, dude? <laughs> bang, mate. It's gotta be the bang. Bro. I know, right? It ha dude, please, no dupes already. It's too early. It's too early. Dude, off-screen Andy, man. Oh, boy, what could it be? What could it be, man? What could it be? What is that? Oh, yes! Oh, my God! What? Oh, my God! We actually got it. Holy, it's only worth 37 million. No, I'm just kidding. This thing's worth a few hundred. I got to split with the boys, so it's important. Keep that in mind. Oh, my God. Damn, that means we're going to retire the rape here for uh, expert runs. Because that's pretty much all we're going to be doing, so... The difference you're going to know is... Oh, dude. Yes, dude. Even the soul is going to feel so nice, man. Because, man, the Poke Boy, you know, just couldn't always hit. Holy... Yeah, I hit, like, all the time. <laughs> the only downside is P2. Yeah, P2 sucks. So I got to really, like, save my DDS as well for that. Because we're going to have to claw scratch, you know, for our main, uh, main attack outside of the specking. Wow, let's go, man. We actually got the fang finally. Oh, damn, that's nice, though. Wait, what's the... Okay, so this thing is five ticks, so... The only reason this fang is better than the rape here... Because you can, as you can see, like, the, the fang's stats are a bit higher, but this is 20% slower, 25% slower attack speed than the rape here, so... The rapier, when defense is not an issue, will dominate the fang. But because we're doing experts, everything's defense is so much higher that, yeah, this defense penetrating, it's got the armor piercing uh, ability. So the fang is super consistent at hitting things with high defense. So, yeah, this is definitely the new upgrade. So I've just been really into the tomb. So I haven't really done a whole lot outside of tombs. I've just been trying to push the levels and getting more drops and so on. But. I will definitely be using these items, of course, outside of tombs because there is a lot of PVM stuff out there left for me, you know, goals wise, like the collection lock stuff. So there's going to be a variety of other bosses that we're going to be using all these new gear at. Specifically, I mentioned the ring already, but we're also going to do a video on the Fang, of course, as well, when we use the Fang outside of race three. Uh, some places like suicide court method, the method I use is going to actually make it better. And also, it's going to be really good on things like Rune Dragons, because we still need to get that Dragon Plate body eventually. And so much more. So I can't wait to show you guys the hidden power of the Fang soon. But for now, enjoy my discoveries with the Fang at Race 3. So this Fang is incredibly interesting and complicated because it has two special abilities and also a special attack. So the Fang's first passive ability is that it will try its best to hit the average potential hit that you can do. So let's say with my gear setup, my Fang's max hit is 60, right? The damage will range from about, let's say, 20 to about a 50. I'll never really hit a 10 and I'll never really hit a 60 unless I use a special. What that means is the kill time to kill a specific monster is going to be about the same every time. So the Fang's second passive ability, arguably what makes it stupidly strong, is the ability to roll again if you were to hit a miss on your hit. So essentially, it has 200% accuracy per hit. 
So this weapon is basically the most accurate weapon in the entire game. You don't need special attacks to do it, you just need the weapon. And the special attack is really stupidly good. It's 25% cost, so you can spam it a bunch of times in a row. It's 50% more accurate on top of it already being stupidly accurate, which is really nice. And you get to hit your true max. So if it was like a 60, then yeah, I can hit up to a 60 with it. I've been using the Fang a ton at the tombs, and it's definitely one of the essential weapons to have here. Especially if you're going to do level 300 or higher. Because at that point, everything is extremely tanky. It's stupidly good at Carefree, stupidly good at Baba, and also stupidly good at Akka, especially that last phase with the Jizz Balls. You want to kill that phase ASAP, and you want a weapon that can reliably kill it at a fast rate. And the Fang can do that for you, other weapons can't, because sometimes it just hit a bajillion zeros or just hit insanely high. This weapon is just consistent. It's stupidly good. Also, the spec is really good as well. I've realized that I'd rather just use that spec over claws because honestly, at higher levels, it's better to probably have an extra inventory space for food or something. And yeah, the Fang spec just feels like a claw, except you can do it four times. So it's really, really nice. And yeah, it, it's just such a good item, man. Oh my god, it's revolutionary, honestly. Free! Way too accurate, bruh. So this is another week of updates, a lot of it to do with the tombs, but I think this will be the last big overhaul for Rage 3 for a while. The biggest change this week is definitely the Shadow getting exclusively a lot stronger at Rage 3. They made it so that when you are using the Shadow of Tomb McKinney in Rage 3, it is now 33% more accurate and more damage than it was before. Which means it will outplay the Tebow at places like the Crocodile boss, the Shadow is now best in slot there, better than the Tebow. And also a P3 Warden is also better than the Tebow now. Which means I really want to get it because it's like an insane upgrade <laughs> if I get it for Rage 3. Hopefully it's not my last item because then I'll have some fun with it if I get it. But yeah, as you can see, my friend is just dishing out like 80s with the Shadow at Rage 3. It's disgusting. So Jagex also released the cosmetic kits for Rage 3 as well. So there is a cosmetic kit guarantee at level 350 for your range cape, the Missouri Recolor, if you complete at 350 and nobody dies. And then the next one is the Ward Recolor kit at 425. And finally, the Fang Recolor kit at 500. I'll definitely try to go for those at some point, but because they're cosmetic kits, I definitely don't feel as pressured since they don't you know, change how good they are, but definitely it would be a nice achievement, just like the Zuck Helm, for example. You got a purple. Yo, you see a key? You see a key? Oh, it's yours. It's yours. Oh, mate. Imagine if this is a staff. Uh, dude, I'm going to be like, haha, Gozu. Nice sleep, mate. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, dude, it's going to be a warder <sighs> ring. Please, I beg. Something Yo, nice. Good. Something massive, bro. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, dude, really good, good for really good that's for a strike. Really good. Holy shit. Oh my god. Wow. Almost fucked up. Jeez, I freaking saved it. That's the only way to save it at the very end. You can't really save it if you mess up the beginning, but luckily I messed up at the very end, so it was all good. 50. Oh yeah, I hit 50 uh, experts last last raid. That's pretty cool. That means we're uh, on the high scores for it. Oh damn it, dude! Oh wait, 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 we pushed it. Yes. Oh my god, that was sick. That was crazy. You saw that? That was actually nuts. It was about to start the AOE attack, but then I I hit it while it was mid teleport, and it canceled it. That was so sick. I've never seen that before. That's the first. I got a PB even though the raid got harder. So for those of you guys that are newer to the account or just forgot, I don't actually have a Spectral. And that's the only sigil I don't have at Corp. And also for the Corp log, I don't have any sigils at all. Because that stuff is way back in the day. So I still do Corp from time to time. The Fang is supposed to be really good at Corp. Under Revy certain circumstances and the circumstances that if i don't lower corpse stats all the way to zero 
then the fangs actually better than the Samarakian spear. I don't do that. I don't lower corpse stats all the way zero because the method that I do is called the suicide method, which only lowers its defense to zero. And that means I have to tank the magic hits, but it's way more kills an hour. I can do up to eight kills an hour currently with that method. And with this fang added to the suicide method, I can skip the art light specking and just only do three war hammers. Also does full damage. So yeah, theoretically it should increase my kills per hour. So that's what we're going to find out right now. I'm going to go ahead and test out the fang as my main weapon for the suicide core method and get back to you guys. I guess because I don't have to art light spec anymore, I can just... Before the start of uh, my session, I just drop like probably three inventory, four inventory worth of food. So then I don't have to suicide at all. I go straight from hammer into straight fighting the boss. This would work out probably really good for me this way. So the old suicide method, I would usually do at least three hammer specs and then also four to five art light specs, which still took a little bit of time, right? But with the Fang just landing three hammers, it's already 98% or something accuracy, which is like almost no misses at that point. So I can save even more time just not doing that many art light specs. So right away, I noticed that I probably should just camp the best defensive shield I have, which would be the Ellie in this case. Um, if you don't have it, probably DFS would be pretty good. But the idea is that because I haven't really lowered much of its offensive stats at all, like the melee stats even, it will hit me quite often. So actually having a lot more defense is better because the Fang, it's so accurate anyways. I don't even need the defender's accuracy. So I'm only really missing the max hits. But I'm not really missing on the accuracy, so it's worth busted, dude. It's I'm still at like nine and a half kills an hour, and I'm already 40 minutes in. Holy! Oh my god, this is way better than I thought. I I was doing some rough theoretical math, and yeah, it was like thinking, okay, maybe it could be eight and a half kills an hour. To clarify, if you are going to spec the boss stats down to completely zero meaning it's kind of afkable the fang is not better than the samaritan spirit the samaritan spirit is still better if you make the boss pretty much zero stats but that method again it's only probably six kills an hour max or maybe six and a half now with my old method it was around seven and a half to upwards of eight and this method here, which is basically a better version of my own method, is 9 kills and more an hour, theoretically. I was able to, uh, as you can see, do 9 kills an hour on my first few tries with this setup. Alright, we, we did it. This is about an hour. We did it. 9 kills an hour. Holy shit. Wow, that was crazy. This is pretty significant because we're talking about singular digits here, but getting an extra kill an hour a corp is basically over 10% faster kills per hour. So that, that's a pretty sizable chunk, over 10%. Black, yellow, black, yellow. <laughs> I got six hours. Wait, does that mean I die? No. Actually, I don't know if I die or not. Don't tell me I'm dead. Dude, that's bullshit. Yo, f Jagex. That's that's actually troll. That's actually so troll. Six hour actually kills you. Oh my days. Wow, that hits hard. How much did you guys hit, by the way? What? What? 